morning everybody welcome back um today i thought i would share a quick create with me um on how i made these little pockets to go in our journals um, they've come out to be about three inches by five inches and um, it's just very basic items that most of us have um, in our stash and the first being an abundance of book pages we've all got those and then most of us have got this shipping paper lying around, and I just uh, was playing around, and <clears throat> I came up with these, so I thought I would just share that with you guys in case you're looking for some more, more ideas on how to use up those book pages. So I'll sit these to the side. Like I said, there's, it's very simple, um, but we'll just jump in and get this started. You're going to need a fairly um, good weight book page. Um, and, you know, if you need to, <laughs> I know this sounds weird, but <clears throat> if you need to go out and find, you know, if you're out at the thrift stores, you sometimes I just open up the book and feel the weight of the page because a lot of the books that maybe I'm buying to fill my journals with aren't necessarily the weight that I would want to use for something like this. So that's just another little thing you might want to be aware of. Um, so just decide on whatever size it is that you're wanting for yours. I try to keep my um, pockets under four inches because my journal pages tend to be, um, you know, around five. So um, just to make sure that I know these are going to fit in. And these can also be used as a floating pocket if you wanted to. You could just clip them in. So um, I've just folded this over because I want to make it a little bit... <clears throat> thicker just so that it's you know sturdier within the journal so just get that glued down <clears throat> you can use um, glue sticks or whatever glue you want to use for it I just happen to have that handy I would normally just be using my glue sticks on that so just get that down really good let it dry and then I decided to um, just snip off that rough edge if you want to leave that you certainly could but I'm just gonna take that off quickly and then the other thing I did was because I knew um, that I would want some of the print showing, I've opted to have that at, at the bottom. So I rounded the corners at the top of this. And then just go ahead and distress that with some ink. This is um, vintage photo. Now the next thing I did was take my shipping paper and just decide how wide you're going to want it. First let me get that straightened up. I don't know why. That's... So decide how, how wide you're going to want that. And I, I want some of the... Um, print to show on the sides. So I'm going to bring it in probably about a, I don't know, maybe a eighth of an inch on each side. You don't have to be too exact on this. And the other thing I like to do is just fold that back down because when you're taking things in and out of the pocket, it does make it slightly easier excuse me, if you fold that down, and also crimp, crumble it up so that you can, um, you know, get those lines in it. <clears throat> I mean, you don't have to do that, obviously, if, if that's too much of a rustic look for you, you could leave it plain, or you could just take another book page for that matter. But I like the contrast of the craft paper against the book page. I just think it looks really nice. Okay. 
Okay, so that's looking good. And that's going to form the pocket. So the next thing you're going to want to do is run a stitch across here. I've done that already. And I just did a, a really small zigzag. So I'll sit those to the side. This is the one I've done just to make it go a little bit quicker. So with this one, this was a um, Reader's Digest. And it's kind of got the images on, on here. So I'm definitely going with a nature theme on this one. And I've already cut out a couple of things. These come from Tracy's shop. Love Junk Journals on Etsy, and then this is in Artie Mays. She does beautiful butterflies. So I've kind of played around with it, and I know that um, how I want this to be positioned. And I'm going to do this before I sew it, because then I'm going to take this through the machine and stitch that down. But I want to go ahead and get this put where I want. And the first thing I want to do is <clears throat> distress the edges around this butterfly. They're a little bit white still. And I'm just going to glue that butterfly in the center there. Actually, let me get a little bit of cheesecloth. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm still coughing, guys. I um, had been keeping my window open in here. Let me put a little bit of ink on that. It's a little bit white. Um, but the last couple days it's cooled off here. So um, I think when I've got that closed, it's there's something in here. Probably all these books and stuff irritate my throat a bit. Dum -dum -dum -dum. Get my little pokey tool. That's the technical term, I'm sure. Let's let him sit there and then just... These are Tracy's little tiny labels. They are so, so cute. Just going to put that there. And at this point, guys, I'm going to have to stop the camera. And I'll be back because I'm going to now take this to the machine and just stitch the three sides. Okay? That way it'll form a pocket. Be right back. Okay, guys. Now you can see how that looks since I've run that through the machine. And then there's your little pocket. Now let me just add an eyelet up here. Just in case, uh, I've had this question in the past. This is a crocodile, and you use it to set your eyelets. Um, I know most of us know that, but I have had a few ladies who are new to crafting who have asked me, well, what is that, and what does it do? So that sets your eyelet in there, and that was a Stampin' Up! one, but I think We Are Memory Keepers does it, but I've had this one, gosh, I don't know, 10 years now, I guess. Okay, so the other thing I did with these, let me just show you these real close. These are plain, you know, very plain, but I like that. I Sometimes I'm, I don't like too much fuss. Um, and then I just add in some of the Irish linen thread somewhere. I got it here. And I 
and I know I'll have the question about this. I get this from a local shop here, guys, so I'm not too sure where. You might have to do a search online for that, and it is not waxed. I don't like waxed. If I do want to wax it, I've got a wax block I can add to it, but I've had people ask me, is that waxed? But no, I don't really like, um, sorry, I've done that wrong. I don't like working with the waxed thread. I started out with it when I first started making the journals, um, but I've gotten away from it because this, the wax thread you can get from the store is too thick. Okay, let me just see if I can find a little bead to go on the end of this. Just when I thought I had all the bases covered. <laughs> I thought I had everything out and ready, and I totally forgot to have that, so you'll have to listen to me digging through my drawers. That didn't sound good, did it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, dear. It's early. I need another cup of coffee, I think. So I'm just going to tie that off, and... Uh, you can decorate this as elaborately as you, as you want. I just, I don't know, I kind of like a, things a bit simpler. And uh, I like how that's come out. So, and then you got the little bead there. So let me get all this mess out of the way. I have to say, this is a pet peeve of mine. Um, when I'm watching tutorials, because we all are messy crafters, but oh, it drives me mad at the end when I can't get a very good look at what we've created. So I'm, I, this is why I always try to clear everything so you guys don't have anything to distract. So let's just zoom in. So you can see, you could easily just have that float within the uh, journal. That one's just a little um, doily. It was like... Um, a tablecloth, but it, it, you know, had some damage, so I got it. I think I paid 25 pence. It's huge. So I've just started cutting out all of these little, they're kind of like a little flower. And you think, oh, all the time it must have taken them to do that, but at least I'm repurposing it. I stitched a button to that one. This one was just an image. I would gotten um, some new stamps at the car boot about a year ago, and I'd just been started stamping. I wanted to see what the image looked like. So I've just torn around that image that's been stamped, and then this is uh, muslin with um, a stamp word on there that I've attached. And then you've got the little journal card that will tuck in there. And then this is the one that we've made. And again... You could let that float within the journal if you wanted to, but I think that's come out really sweet. So look at how quick and easy that was, guys. So stay tuned. I've been The brain's been buzzing, so I've got a few more ideas on how we can use up these book pages. I hope you'll uh, have enjoyed it. Hopefully you've got some time on your hands that you can try it. I think we all have got too much time on our hands at the moment. But hopefully you'll get a chance to uh, play around with them. Let me know. I'd love to see what you do. Um, take care, everybody. Stay safe. And I'll be back soon. Bye.